How's it going, Teal Boys? We are national champions. And now it's time for our final postseason with Coastal Carolina. We will be moving teams pretty early here in the process, but at 16 0, well, let's just take a look real quick at uh, some leaders in the nation. Granted, we did get a few extra games compared to some of the teams on this list. Uh, but Radon ends the season almost 4,000 passing yards. Mike Fontaine breaks 1,000 rushing yards in his true freshman season. I'll be excited to see what he's able to do uh, under the new regime here. He came in as like a 78 overall freshman, so I think by the time his senior season comes around, he should be a pretty solid back as long as they utilize him properly. Marquise obviously is going to be receiving leader. 1300 plus yards in his senior season uh certainly he's gonna get drafted pretty high in the draft there's no doubt about it again tackles are kind of broken but there is something a little bit interesting about this list and for sack leaders david wilson gets up to nine jumps to that number four spot interception wise it's spencer stanley alone at the top extending his lead on everybody with the game winning interception in the national championship game and well marcus frederick kicked some field goals it was nothing of note so he doesn't even get featured on the longest field goal list and we end as a just a very solid team uh we do have a coach level up that we could put into i've thought about it a lot and i think what we're going to do with the insta commit is i'm going to allow myself one level up a five percent chance of an insta commit is not much uh, but I think once you get to that second and third level with the 10 and 20% chance, it does get a little too cheesy. Uh, but I will allow one level into the Insta commit. And then from then on, we will have to, uh, well, we'll have what, four levels that we could put into the rest of the recruiting. But we'll start working on that game management or who knows, maybe we'll change it up a little bit when we move to our new school. But for now, that's what we will do with the one at level up let's go ahead and advance to the uh off season see how everything goes we'll go to the end of the bowl season we'll take a look at the final rankings and we'll look at the bowl results there as well and we've set some records as well radon randell with a individual season uh qb rating record at 210 he breaks sam howell's record of uh 201 so that's a that's an ncaa record Radon also sets the new school season passing touchdown record with 41. Uh, easily surpasses Tyler Thigpen's from 2006. Uh, 41 passing touchdowns on the year. Marquise Jackson, uh, kind of alongside that, sets the school season receiving yards record at 1,353. That's breaking his uh, record from last year. And he does it by around 70 more yards. Marquise also sets a school career receiving yards record with 3,400, easily surpassing Jerome Simpson's previous record of 2,700. So those guys have managed to permanently etch their names into the record books. How about uh, our final top 25? We end the season as the unanimous number one team in the coaches poll, followed by West Virginia, Oregon, Tennessee, Oklahoma, USC, South Carolina, Arkansas, Florida, and Cal. And I'm not going to say the SEC bias is real, but five of the top 10 being from our conference certainly uh, doesn't hurt that narrative. I'll scroll through. You can pause to see if your team is there. Media poll. We are the unanimous number one as well. Uh, pretty similar, except Oregon's down at fifth. Uh, Tennessee, South Carolina at three and four. How about a look at the bowl results to see uh, what everything is. Again, we'll just kind of scroll through the list. So if you see your team, you can know. Take a look at some interesting ones. A conference matchup between Wisconsin and Michigan in the Gasparilla Bowl is very interesting. Wisconsin, the ranked team, manages to take that one. Elsewhere we have, that's kind of an interesting one, Notre Dame-Stanford a rivalry game in the Holiday Bowl. The Cardinal come out on top. Notre Dame continues to be subpar in this dynasty. Only 7-6 and six on the season. They just barely made a bowl game. Uh, Cheez-It Bowl, Texas beats Duke. What else do we have? Oklahoma State losing to South Carolina in the Texas Bowl. 
Uh, interesting look there. UCLA beats Purdue in the Red Box Bowl. Cal beats Kansas State in the Alamo Bowl. An interesting matchup for Penn State as they are able to beat Marshall in the Cactus Bowl. Uh, you would kind of expect that to happen, but interesting uh, that it came down to that. Washington will end the season with a losing record after losing to Virginia Tech in the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. Uh, Rutgers made it to a bowl game, finishing 7-6, and six, but losing to Arkansas in the Music City Bowl. Florida, Illinois play in the Liberty Bowl. Uh, we had multiple appearances, and there's some interesting ones kind of near the bottom. I think our biggest one uh, in this postseason that wasn't the playoffs was this Citrus Bowl between Oregon and Ole Miss, and the Ducks come out on top 38-17. to 17. Uh, So maybe that's why they end up number three in the polls, is they only had to play one bowl game. Uh, and because they got the win, they're fine. All the other teams that won a bowl game ended up losing to us eventually because of the playoffs. But uh, we come out looking pretty solid. Navy George ends up being relatively close. And everything else is just uh, playoffs. So we've seen the records. We've seen the final results of the season. And I guess it's time to pretty much see ourselves off from the team. After we leave, uh, tons of XP gained in that past week. And we have been offered another uh, contract. But we're going to explore our options in the coaching carousel. All of that XP actually almost got us another level up. So that would be super useful. But uh, we're going to move around a bit. Uh, not only us, but there's a good chance the Coastal has a completely fresh coaching staff. Because Dave Aranda and Mike Yurchich are both looking at being poached. But... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll jump back in when we're at our team. I saw one correct guess at one point uh, throughout this season, but it was by a viewer who was just throwing out every answer they could possibly think of. So uh, I'm not sure if it fully counts. And I'm curious what you guys will think about this. It is definitely going to be an interesting decision. Our defensive coordinator has been hired by Oklahoma State as the new head coach. And Barry Odom will replace him. He had a decent season at Arkansas going 9-4. and four, So Coastal should still have a good defensive coordinator. And our offensive coordinator has gone to be the head coach at Indiana. And Kendall Bryles will come from Western Michigan to be uh, in that role. Uh, he just got fired. They went 2-10. and 10, So defense may be a little bit better off than the offense. Now, this isn't exactly how I planned it, but we can't fully control the coaching carousel anyways. Uh, I had thought that our head coach here was going to retire, uh, but it seems that he's decided to stay another season. So instead of being the head coach of this team, we are going to be the offensive coordinator. And that team is Eastern Michigan. We will go from the Teal Boys to the gray boys maybe the gray guys i'm not sure now currently the mac has not been updated with the college football revamped mod but similar to coastal when they do get updated uh eastern michigan has a gray football field so uh that and the fact that this team is not very good they went five and seven last year and are 79 overall uh those two things are the entire reason for choosing eastern michigan we go from a teal field to a gray field the only other option it seems if we are going to switch up our program again would be boise state but eastern michigan i expect will get a gray field when the mac gets updated so it's going to be better for us to already be there when it happens so i didn't want to be the offensive coordinator this year I wanted to be the head coach, but I guess we're going to just have to wait until our head coach actually does decide to retire. So we'll go ahead and decline the offer from Western Michigan, and we will accept uh, the offer from Eastern Michigan as the offensive coordinator, a target of five wins per year. Program tradition is a D minus. Uh, it's a three-year contract. Absolutely. We're going to sign it. So now Coastal has an opening. Uh, Andy Avalos, Brian Harson, and Jacob Peeler are the three main candidates to take over for the Teal Boys. I'm very curious to see where they end up going and uh, what direction the new coach takes them. And they go from uh, Colorado. 
So Colorado's previous head coach, he went eight and five with the buffs. Not too terrible. It looks like he'll bring an air raid in a 3-3-5. He's an A prestige coach. Uh, let's just hope he uh, takes care of our program. So let's take a look at some uh, some coaching changes. Uh, first off, we'll take a look at head coach stuff. See if anything crazy happens. Chad Staggs, I think our previous offensive or de defensive coordinator has been fired by Arizona State. Again, we have been replaced by Jacob Peeler. He's 8-5 and five in his career, which is honestly small. He lost a bowl game 2-3 and three versus the top 25, but 3-1 and one versus rivals. So hopefully that works out pretty well. One of our previous coordinators, Mike Yurichich, has ended up as the head coach at Florida State. We'll wish him luck for sure. Will Muschamp is now at Fresno State. Uh, Campbell has been fired from Iowa State, replaced by Bryant Vincent. Coach O has retired at LSU and has been replaced by Patrick Tony. Dave Aranda, our other coordinator, uh, was hired by NC State. So both of those guys end up as head coaches uh, in the ACC. And for the most part, that is uh, everything interesting. Kendall Bryles got fired at Western Michigan. So a new head coach uh, at one of the other directional Michigan schools. It feels really weird, but that's where, we, where we're at. And one of the things that I was kind of excited about, if anybody noticed while th scrolling through the stats, passing leaders was nothing to write home about, nor was rushing or receiving. But tackle leaders, the fifth leading tackler in the country and the highest outside of our glitchy coastal teal boys, is uh, W. Benjamin, who ended the season with 53 solo tacklers. So realistically, we have the nation's leading tackler on our side. Uh, we have a guy up there with sacks as well, Winston, number 16. I mean, obviously, some of these guys uh, could be graduating, but I think in general, that's good news for us. So we can move on to the next stage now that you guys know uh, what team it is that we're with, and we can go ahead and see which one of these guys are leaving. One more thing that I'm super excited about being able to do this offseason is we can finally use the new uh, NCA 14 Dynasty tool with our Dynasty. This is the first offseason uh, since this has been released. There's a video uh, up in the top right if you want to know how to use this yourself, but we can uh, change the way that this works and it should make things a little bit more interesting. So we'll create a new file for it. And we can go ahead and change the draft declaration now. This is the same process you would use if you were going to uh, do the playoffs. So the same exact file and folder. Uh, we can just go in and grab our USR data file. And it will load up. And it's going to change uh, what players decide to declare. And actually, this is going to be kind of our first look at our roster. So uh, that'll be a little bit interesting. Or at least maybe last year's roster. So we are just a one-star school, 19 players leaving, none entering the draft, uh, all of them leaving because of graduation, which is actually really good news for us. Uh, we lose uh, some decent looking players, but the highest is an 86 overall, uh, and then you drop down to a 70 overall. So nobody world beating, which is really, really good for us. And what's great about this tool is we can also see what it is that uh, Coastal is doing throughout all of this. And we can see where our guys are going to go. So John Taylor, the 99 overall defensive tackle, is a projected first round pick. Marquise Jackson is a projected first round pick. Radon Randell is only a redshirt sophomore. He is declaring for the draft. So he will not be playing in the next season. Uh, he was, what, three points shy of winning the Heisman. He's led the team to back-to-back -to -back national championships, right? And he is declaring it projected for the first round. Malcolm Williams, another wide receiver, projected for the first round. Our backup quarterback, who got barely any uh, snaps in this past season, David Williams, projected for the second round. Durham Finch, uh, one of our viewers and a big supporter of the channel. His created player, the 93 overall right end, is going to be projected for the third round. Uh, and then we're going to have, what, two other guys, Robert Gray, the center, and Kale Mackey, another uh, viewer-created player, is going to go in the fifth round. So uh, if you want to be like Durham or Kale, uh, you can go down and check out the membership stuff, and maybe you can get yourself 
uh, on to the Eastern Michigan team. Otherwise, let's see. We have Don Riley deciding to stay for a year, which is good for him. I think he'll bump up his draft stock quite a bit. Uh, and then just other guys graduating. Bo Lamb, Gamora Kelly, names that we would see every once in a while. J.J. Barr, who, believe it or not, was only a 76 overall fullback. Did so much for us. Unfortunately, not going to go pro, but uh, eight players entering the draft, two of those being early entrants. So we can just go ahead and double check that that worked by going into this uh, players leaving. Everything looks fine to me. Uh, it would have been fun to play with some of these guys, I'm sure, but uh, hopefully our new quarterback is a little bit better than Matt Rose. So we can now advance to the next stage, go to our transfer requests, and we will be exporting the draft class. Uh, maybe look for a video relatively soon on this specific draft class. I've got a fun idea in mind for that. Uh, well, let's take a look at the draft results. I don't think that anything will be changed here, but there's a chance that Coastal could have uh, had something different happen. Uh, but yeah, that looks pretty much the same. I don't know, was Durham projected for the first round before? Uh, Taylor, Jackson, Randall, and Finch all go in the first round. Uh, Williams goes in the second. Other Williams goes in the third. Kale Mackey goes in the fifth. And Robert Gray goes in the sixth for Coastal. So... Uh, whoever the new head coach is just got a bunch of free XP for all those guys going in the draft. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Do we have any transfer requests? Anybody trying to come play for us? And do we want them is the question. There's a freshman from Georgia Southern. He's a wide receiver. He's 66 overall. Does he have any crazy skills? He's not super quick. Um, his catching is only 65. I'm going to say no to Jonathan Wallace. Hopefully we don't have any problems with uh, too few players in the strong safety. Uh, not super slow. He's, he's decently quick. He can tackle relatively well. He's not great at coverage or uh, play recognition, but I mean, he can kind of hit people and he can kind of catch the ball. Uh, he's a freshman coming over from NC State. I think we'll accept him. And while we're here and while I'm thinking about it, we have some offensive coordinator level ups to do. So uh, Brian Van Gorder is our current head coach i'm expecting him to retire this next year and we should take over the program uh andre mcdonald is our defensive coordinator just a level five not going to do a whole lot for us but uh as an offensive coordinator i'm going to expect us to have a relatively high powered offense let's get our line nice and good uh let's get the running going and then we have two upgrades we want mathlete or athlete i'm gonna go with athlete right off the bat uh, and that's what we're going to look like as offensive coordinator, Brandon Goon. It's going to be a lot different this season. Uh, different than I was expecting it to be, but it should still be pretty dang fun. Let's go ahead and advance towards our next stage in the recruiting. I'm curious to see if Coastal ends up with a good class or a better class than maybe uh, we left them with the position. And I'm curious to see what our season's going to look like. I At one point, I looked... And there was a decent class for Eastern, but I'm not sure if that is held up. 63rd in the nation isn't terrible. No four or five stars, uh, so we could hope to be a little bit better than that. Currently, a better class than Alabama, who's only signed six players. That is bizarre to me. What are the six players is kind of crazy. Uh, where is Coastal sitting right now? And then we can see where they... Uh, go to they are the number 15 class seven four stars three three stars for a total of 10 players curious to see there where that goes and curious to see what we can do uh maybe with some of this we could oh gosh not every, everybody's how many people three people 20 people 28 people aren't scouted oh my goodness what are the coaches doing here not only that but look how bad some of these players are 55 overall We'd be almost better with walk-ons. Uh, we have signed a couple of guys, 67s, uh, 66s, but my goodness, this is, well, this is just pretty rough. Nobody scouted on this board. Uh, I don't, well, we can't waste our points to scout them. We just have to hope that they are actually as good as we initially thought. Uh, that's a little bit frustrating. We will open the door with Courtney Keith. Uh, we might be able to steal him away from Tennessee. 
And I'm just going to go down to the bottom of the board and take some of these players off because I don't want them committing to our team, if I'm being honest. Like, they'll do more harm than good is what my fear is. All right, well, we're just going to go for the best players possible. Uh, we might just stack it into the top three players because the top four goes down to Keith Moss, and we have the lead there. Uh, so Johnny Roberts, we're in the lead over Central and Western Michigan. Courtney Keith, we are behind 520 on Tennessee. And Ernest Bennett, uh, we are behind Western Michigan. So we're going to, yeah, we're just going to kind of split the points pretty much evenly between these three and hope that we can pick some of them up. So this is how we're going to do it. We've got 3,400 points to Johnny Roberts, who's the guy that is the lowest overall, but we're already in the lead with. Uh, we're going to go 4,050 to Courtney Keith, try to fight back against Tennessee, and then we'll go 4,000 to Ernest Bennett. Uh, uh, there's not a whole lot that they gave us to work with, so let's hope that we can pull a couple of those guys in and maybe increase the ranking of this recruiting class. So I guess we'll just go straight to uh, signing day and see where the cards fall and what we're going to have to work with. Oh, well, we got all of them. Ernest Bennett commits, Courtney Keith commits, Johnny Roberts commits, and Keith Moss, that quarterback that we were in the lead with, goes to Toledo. So guess we don't have to worry about having a 59 overall quarterback on the team. Top class in the conference, a top 10 class. Wait, what? A top 10 class? Uh, what? I know that our name has a lot of pull, only one scholarship remaining. Did nobody just sign people? That's not a top 10 class. Are we getting points for uh the coastal one we end up with the 61st class 15 three stars four two stars and four one stars for a total of 23 uh let's go up to the top of this list here and, and see what's going on <laughs> i'm very confused notre dame ends with the top class in the country bunch of four and three stars michigan probably with the better class only signs 18 but five of them are five stars that is absolutely insane for a team that went eight and five this is, notre dame's is pretty insane for a team that went seven and six uh, the Sooners get two five stars for the third class. And it's USC, Clemson, Georgia, Wisconsin, Texas, Auburn, and then there's Coastal. So uh, Teal Boys pull in one five star recruit. Uh, they got six more total. So decent class. And that must be where that XP came from. So kind of the game to give that to me. Gonna just kind of scroll through and uh, we'll see that top 25. And then I'm always curious to see. What interesting teams managed to pull five stars? Purdue pulls one in. Utah pulls one in. Both of those would be pretty unexpected for me. Uh, Arkansas State at number 69, led by Chip Kelly, pulls in one. Arizona State, and that's it. So <laughs> I'll take it. We end up with a not terrible class at the end of the day. Um, any teams that are just like standing out as being surprisingly bad? One of our rivals in Central Michigan is 119th. So that's good news for us. Uh, Vanderbilt down at 113th is pretty rough for a team like that. Uh, Virginia at 105. You feel bad for some of these teams, but at the same time, it's good news for us. Western Michigan also looking worse than us, so that's all we can hope for. Let's go ahead and advance towards position changes, and this, I guess, is going to be where we can first figure out who is even on our team, because uh, we don't know what we're working with. I did see Serge Mitchell when I was looking at the team. Uh, I think he's definitely the best player. He's a senior at 86 overall. I think he might try to carry us uh, on offense. Him and Jesse Wagner should be useful, but let's go ahead and take a look at quarterback. It's Ed Bird, the 76 overall redshirt senior. Uh, we need him to go up because the rest of the guys aren't looking too hot. All three of them are coming in as true freshmen. Uh, we'll probably keep that quarterback room the same. At running back, there's a severe drop-off after Wagner. Uh, we go down to Simmons at 69 overall, and then 68 with Stan Williams. That's pretty rough. We have two fullbacks. They look okay. Courtney Smith and Jeremy Robertson. The wide receivers, uh, there's quite a few of them. A lot of them new. Uh, half of the wide receiver core is brand new to the team. The other half is been around for a while and is pretty mediocre uh again we're gonna have to hope for some breakout players in the offseason tight ends look a little bit weak left tackles pretty weak left guards even weaker centers not the best right guard also not the best 
Uh, but we are going to be moving Johnny Roberts over to the left side just to balance things out there. Right tackles don't look great. How about all the defense? 70s across the board for the top three left ends. Right ends, you got a 71, then a 63. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to move Josh Jackson over to the right side. And then we'll bring Anthony Parsons over to the left. Get our two deep looking a little bit better. Defensive tackles is where we could be kind of happy. Banks, 81. Dawson, 76. Kind of interesting. Uh, left outside linebackers, not terrible. Middle linebackers, a little bit interesting as well. We've got a gem. Uh, Juco transfer uh, that will be leading the way in Eric Lane. And then two freshmen. The sophomore that is returning is not all that great. At the right side, uh, Wade Benjamin, again, pretty much led the nation in tackles last year. The senior is going to be a tremendous help. Uh, but just in general, we're kind of looking a little bit rough there. Also looking rough in the corner department. My goodness, highest overall is a 76 from Lorenzo Henry. Uh, these guys are decently quick, not the best awareness. Uh, how bad is our pass coverage going to be? This season is the real question. It's not going to be great. Uh, zone and man aren't all that good. Uh, press is pretty good. Pursuit, maybe not so much. This is, this is going to be rough. How about our safety positions? We've got uh, Samuel Thomas, Terrence Van, 73 to 69. That's bad. And it's strong safety. It's still just not looking good. I would change Devin Royal over to a free safety. Uh, but he's the only freshman in this group. Uh, that's going to be rough. Kicker, Kyle Harris is 67 overall. He's coming in as a freshman. And the punter, Brian Jones, is 70 overall uh, as a sophomore. So I guess we're really not changing a whole lot of positions. Keep all that. And we'll just go and hope that in this offseason they have good training. One of the big things that the Dynasty tool does is the offseason training. It completely changes that. Uh, so we can look at this and we can see, okay, Serge Mitchell goes up to a 91, but all of this is going to change. Go ahead and back out so we don't brick anything. And we will come to this and we will go to the player progression. And uh, it uses a formula that throws in so many factors, including how good coaches are to determine how much players will go up or potentially down. Again, that will be uh, in that video that uh, is linked down below. And I'm curious to see. There's a chance that a player could absolutely skyrocket on there overall. And there's also a chance that maybe our best player in Serge Mitchell could go down. So this is just uh, too much suspense for me right now. So here we are. Serge Mitchell does actually stay at that plus five, which is good news for us. And again, if you're unaware, these, uh, these ratings right below the team name determine... Uh, how efficient the training is. So a C minus academics, a D minus facilities, a D pro potential, a 62 head coach, 65 offensive coordinator, and 28 defensive coordinator. All of that gets jumbled together into an algorithm. And what pops out is this training results. So we can see our top players, Serge Mitchell at 91 overall, Wade Benjamin, the linebacker, led the nation in tackles last year, because up four. Unfortunately, our running back and defensive tackle don't go up at all, uh, which is kind of a shame because that would have been pretty helpful. Uh, you know, they have some stats maybe move a little bit. No, they are completely stagnant. So that's just kind of a bummer. Uh, anybody going down? Yeah, Robert Bullock, our left outside linebacker, goes down from a 77 to a 73. That certainly is not going to hurt. So far, he's the only player that's regressed. Jason Fry, a left tackle, has gone down two. And Cam Jenkins has gone down one. Who is it that has gone up the most? B Brady Davis, the left guard. He's a junior. He goes up plus six to 74. We have a handful of players going up plus five. Uh, so, all in all, not the worst news in the world. Ed Bird, our quarterback, goes up to a 78. Uh, <laughs> things are looking a little bit rough. I do want to go ahead and take a look at Coastal to see what their progression looks like. David West, the quarterback, goes up to a 92. That's plus 8 for him. I just want to see their tops. They get a plus 8 from him and a plus 8 from the sophomore quarterback, Russ Thomas. So the quarterback's skyrocketing. Same with Will Dixon. So uh, just big all around for them. 
their top players 96 92 91 90 90 uh chad bradshaw looking pretty solid don riley the highest player on the team and we can see here that uh it makes sense why they have some stuff going up because their academics are higher their facilities are higher their pro potential is much higher head coach is at a 94 i don't know if that counts us or the new guy uh an offensive coordinator at a 46 defensive at a 68 so we can see uh you know a couple players go down spencer stanley being one of them which is a shame that he regresses after such a uh, prominent first season for him. Um, but just top players in the NCAA this season. Who goes up the most? We have a couple plus 11s. Uh, Eric Johnson at Purdue, Sam Young at Mizzou, and Zach Preston at Mizzou. So something is going on with Missouri where they are just skyrocketing players right now. Uh they have good ratings b minus b minus c 81 43 23 now they just kind of got lucky they had two guys go up a ton uh only one player regressing so just uh, a good off season for the missouri tigers we're going to be using this dynasty tool uh every off season from here on out so it'll be nice because in the future uh, when there's a little bit more data we can go into our progression history and see how specific players have grown throughout the seasons so Zach Wilson, this tight end, uh, in the future, we'll be able to see uh, what happened for him between this year and next year and uh, see if we have any players that have a breakout offseason or if we have maybe a guy who did great one offseason and maybe regressed the next. So again, our training results are exactly like this. Uh, it's a real shame that we get some guys losing uh, overall, but I guess it makes it a little bit more of a challenge. I'm curious to know how much Surge Mitchell carries this team. 94 speed, 94 acceleration. It could be enough for him to carry us on special teams. Kind of in the same way that Marquise has done it. Uh, he's slower than Marquise, but the conference opponents we'll be playing will also be much slower overall. It is nice to see Wade Benjamin getting up to that 99 acceleration. I expect him to be a monster on defense for us, so we just have to hope that uh, Ed Bird is able to do enough to uh, to keep the team afloat on offense so we can advance towards that next stage where we will cut some players, and I think this is going to be pretty easy. Right off the bat, we have five guys that we need to get rid of, and we're just going to cut the worst of them all uh, unless we aren't allowed to cut them from a position. But wide receiver John Henley is gone. Uh, freshman quarterback John Miner's gone. Running back Tariq Sanchez is gone. Uh, so is Jason Miller at the corner and John Roberts at the guard spot. Uh, so pretty easy. We get rid of some freshmen that obviously weren't going to contribute. Nothing too difficult there. And now we can move to our custom conferences. I don't think we'll change a whole lot here, but we might change uh, coach levels. Who knows? So we can reset our head coach and defensive coordinator skills. Uh, that feels a little bit too cheesy for me, though. So I've actually decided just now that we're not going to do that. Brian has decent recruiting skills, so hopefully he's able to do something there. He needs to put points into the kitchen sink. But, uh, you know, he's decided that he wants to go a little bit for the game management skill tree. And I guess we'll keep ours the same. Hopefully we level up pretty quick. We get that final athlete skill and then we can start working on the mathletes. Uh, I think that's going to be it for our off season. For now, the Big 12 is going to stay around. If we get more details in real life about the Big 12 kind of dissolving, uh, I'm not against replicating that here. Uh, we can throw Texas and Oklahoma into the SEC, but we're going to wait for a season for that. So we'll just go ahead and advance to the preseason now. And I think that we're going to save this bit for the next episode. I'm really hoping that you guys aren't completely livid with my choice of teams. I hope that them having a gray field, uh, just like Coastal has the teal field, is enough for you guys to be fine with that. I really wish that we were the head coach, but a season as offensive coordinator will be interesting and we'll probably do double headers uh, for this season. It'll be a quick season and then hopefully next year we can take over the program and run it how we want. So in the comments, I want to know what you guys think about this. Maybe we need a new nickname. Do we go with gray guys? Do we go with gray boys? 
Is there something else that you think would work? Let me know. While you're down there, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe as well. Both of those things help out the channel tremendously. If you've ever been interested in having a recruit named after you, uh, check out the membership tab. And once you've done all that, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, uh, the college football revamped mod, as well as a video on how to use the CFB revamped dynasty tool. But all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are no longer the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.